What's up, everybody? Welcome to day 560, episode 560, making Songbringer. Yes, I'm working on the ending still. So this is a spoiler alert if, you've, if you don't want the plot for Songbringer spoiled. Don't watch this stream right now. Save it for later. Okay, spoiler alert. What I'm working on today is this enemy that is a mind-controlled friend. So this is your friend. He's a fellow scout. He's one of your lead scouts. He's like There's like four scouts for Songbringer that go out. They start to explore the planet first. Um, so he's one of the, those lead scouts or whatever. He's got a like flying motorbike, sky bike, whatever you want to call that. All four of the scouts do. So all four scouts crash, and this one here, Kel, gets basically captured by the enemy and put they put the worms in him and he becomes mind controlled. There's no way once an enemy once anyone has been mind controlled by the Naga, there's no way to get him back. They chew they literally chew themselves into the brain. They chew up the brains of their victims, take their bodies, steal their bodies, and basically that's their mind from then on. And because, um, I guess you could say probably some of the smarter ones can probably mimic, right? If they eat someone else's brains, they can still, like, mimic that person or whatever. So anyways, um, what I want to do now is work on the art. So I'm basing this off of Salad, what's up? Basing this off of, um, Rock scaled up a bit. It's gonna be about this scale, so I'm gonna start turning this into a unique character here. I don't want him to look like Rock here, so the sword won't be on his back. Um, he probably won't stand quite the same. He definitely won't have the same hair or eyes. How you doing today, Salad? Doing all right? Nice. Good to hear. I'm doing all right too. I forgot how fast we can chat lately. It's so cool. I'm I'm used to the old Twitch chat where it's like we get we had like 30 second delay minimum, and that was good. <laughs> man, what you working on today, man? Oh, there's crazy now. Five seconds. Dang. That's incredible. It's like Twitch is Twitch chat is usable now. <laughs> Live studios. Okay, so let's start with his hair. Thinking he has also kind of a top knot type thing, not definitely not that. Whoa, smaller cursors, please. There we go, smaller cursors, something like this, where he has sort of like. Long hair. What color should his sword blade be? Go dot, huh? Cool, man. What's the what's like the one sentence version? You're putting your engine on the back burner, considering? Oh, right, yeah, yeah. I hear you, man. Well, it sounds like you really made some good progress, though, on your engine. It sounded like you were building a really quality base so you could come back to it, you know, at any point. 
you'll get that bug again. You'll be like, oh, I want to, I want to work on my engine now. Or something. Right, yeah. Nice, right on. Um, I just read a really cool talk, or I mean, watch this. Um, it's this video called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Artists. And one of them was about circling back to things, you know, like putting things on the back burner, relaxing them, and then coming back to them at a later date. And it's, I'll, ch I'll send it to you, the link to this video. Maybe this is kind of like, yeah, this is a pretty cool talk to check out. I think this, I think his talk here applies entirely to game development as in general, as well as he's talking more about making art and the seven habits of highly effective just artists. But this really applies to all of game development. Like you can do this with programming too. Nice. Right, yeah, creative work in general, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just going to be working on pixel art today, working on this character. I don't think he's going to be shirtless, but I'm just drawing him this way at first. Right, right. Best quality as a game maker in Unity. He's a better scene graph entity system than both of them. Really? Wow. Huh, that's cool. What um what language? Nice. All right, so trying to draw a sword. There's that's a little better. <laughs> uh. 
That's his sword sheathed. Something like that. C++ and a scripting language. Okay. Oh, nice. Right on. What's that color wheel? Sometimes you just need a color wheel. Okay, so I got like this cyan color. Uh, pink is its it's turt tur What's that? Triad color triad. Is that what that is? I don't know. That can't be right. Triad. Where's the saturation? Here we go. All right, I want a color that's not too saturated. But darker. There. Oh, wow. That's cool. Huh. Wow, it's C++, huh? Oh, it's MIT licensed as well. Check that out. So wait, so you do you write your game in C++ as well? Like when you write when you have to write code or I guess you wouldn't do it for scripts, but like I'm I'm just wondering how much C++ do you write versus using the editor? Oh, no, that's cool. You can write in C++. That's neat. Or their script. All right, here's, here's some of their scripting. Yeah, it does have a real Python look to it. That's cool. Hmm, right, right. Cool, man. This looks like a pretty good engine. That's cool. Right, right. But then wait, what's really nice about if you can if you can truly do everything in that you can do in the editor, you can do programmatically, then it's great for a person like me that would never use editor. 
But it's awesome because you still have the editor in case you want, if you have a small team of people, for example, and some of them don't know C++, they can still use the editor. It sounds pretty neat. It's like the best of both worlds. Evening. What's up, Diamond Killer? Welcome to the stream. Spoiler alert. Well, not really it's so spoiler, I guess. I'm just working on this dude here. We're talking about the Godot engine right now. We've chat, been chatting about that. Right, right. Oh, that's cool. Right, right. Oh, right on. Nice. You're also looking into what engine? Wait, so what does FOSS mean again? I forgot what this means. Isn't that feature over style? Oh, free or open source. Right. Yeah. Yeah, totally. You can. You can modify it. Wow, that is really cool. You can get autocomplete with it. Oh, right. Unreal. Right, right. Hmm. Okay, so do I like this character how he is with these green pants? Not really! There's something wrong with these green pants! Dude, that's cool. Autocomplete is so important for any kind of programming or scripting. Gosh. 
Does it auto-complete your stuff for like variables and things that you've defined in your own code? Or in your own scripts? No, this green sucks. This, this sucky green color. I'm putting this up here in the palette though. <laughs> I'm saving you green color, even though I don't like you. Yeah, I must have. Okay, oh, it's cool. It's full. Nice. Yeah, that's like one of the biggest reasons to switch that I switched to vi to Vim's cuz the autocomplete is so much faster than Xcode. Why is Xcode's autocomplete so slow? I mean, even if you even if you get your project all set up right so that Xcode can understand it, like you have your headers all in the right files, you're not doing Unity builds or whatever. Even then, Xcode's autocomplete is slow. And running your project from Xcode is slow. It's so much faster for me to on the command line to run the game fr straight from Xcode build. Even though Xcode build itself is slow, it takes like a whole second to load or whatever. <clears throat> yeah. Krita, huh? Krita, what's this one? Oh, this digital painting app? <laughs> the garbage paper talking to a baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice, they did a really good job on their UI, that's for sure. I wonder, how is it to use it? I mean, I'm assuming you have layers. Yeah, this just looks like nice and, if you're used to Photoshop, this looks familiar in general. Okay, green color. What's ah, green color? You're pissing me off, green color. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Oh no, it's erasing your settings. I Mm-hmm.
Ja. This brightness twenty. Want this to be brightness twenty. Hmm. Right. Oh, so is Krita free? How much does Krita cost? Oh. Oh, well, that's... That's what that's how this all got started. I forgot. Ah, right, right. So get one out. Yeah. Cool. I'll, I'll know what you're talking about next time when I have a chance to watch it. I wish I could play I wish I could play YouTube videos on this stream but alas lots of them have copyrighted stuff Ah <laughs> Okay, let's see how this guy looks. Any game. Render this. This belongs in Sheets Shadow. All right, let's see how that looks. Well, I think I gotta delay his um, unsheath because he'll just take his sword out right away. <clears throat> Rebuilding.
mean, the sprite sheet takes a second, man. That, sprite, that shadow one is huge. There's so many. Oh, whoa. Kind of look cool there for a second. All right, cool. I got to get him to not pull his sword out so quick. Kel. Your AI, Kel. Don't pull your sword out just so fast, man. Wait a second before you do that, man. Target hero mode zero. What do we got? We got mode one. Let's do mode 10 will be him unsheathing. Timer zero, mode 10. Delay. How long should it delay before he pulls the sword out? Like, probably with something really fast. If mode 10, target hero, do the unsheath. Give him the skin sword, start heading towards the target, and then delay. Actually, we should probably set... If mode 11, this will be... Mode 11, mode 11, dirt target. Oh, this is delay animate though. Skin, sword. Wait. There. Mode 11, dirt target, mode 12. No, this is just where it goes back to mode zero. Okay, so there, you should delay before he unsheaths his sword now and he also delays before he starts running so it's a little bit uh, yeah it's a little bit less aggressive i guess but okay cool so we can take a look at him now I'd like to see him a little further north. There's nothing to do. Nothing to do with the aforementioned memes. Okay, cool. There, now he just needs to be a little further south. Minus 20, man. 20 less than that. Cool. There we go. He does look pretty cool. I think his maybe his legs are a little too dark though. Yeah, lighter legs, lighter pant color.
Mm, I probably can tell if I turn on a desaturate thing. Oh, actually, well, it depends on what you're comparing it to, I guess. See the CGA color palette? Cool. <laughs> yeah. It's a cool palette, right? Maybe I could maybe I should take a look at that right now, actually, and get some inspiration for what color his pants should be. Oh my gosh, I forgot all about the CGA color palette. Oh, my whole childhood, man. This is my childhood right here. CGA. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. This is so... A really good example of that cyan and pink color. Palette Zero? Yeah, right? What is... If I add zero here, does it change? So I'm thinking the yellow color. What's this hue? Or maybe the red color. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> Games look like that? <laughs> oh my gosh, yes! Every game when we were kids looked like that. Every game when I was a kid. Okay, was isn't this a crazy how different the brown and the yellow are? I mean everything else is like almost the same. Such a weird palette like that. It's a quirk. It's definitely a quirk of this this color palette, the yellow brown. Right? I'm curious about this. If I take this red, that's brightness 99 and this red is brightness 66. Nice. So 99 is 66. And this is hue 60, 99. Hue 30, see? It changes the whole hue. That's what I'm talking about. If this were, if this palette were more uniform, this yellow color, this brown color actually, would look like this. Probably more saturated, but it would look like that. That's what this color palette would be, right? This is such a little quirk, man. It's so quirky, the brown. Oh, yeah? Oh, well, you know what? It's all a matter of perspective. I mean, there's games that are more retro than what I played. You know, that pe when you go to, like, when I went to GDC, I saw this retro game section. It was more retro than I was used to. I was like, wow, look at this. Old school Atari. I know, right? Every single one of these colors is just a brighter version of the one before, except for the brown. Okay, but anyways, that brown um, or the red or the yellow might be might be good color choices. In fact, I think I'm gonna try the freaking yellow first. It's hue 60. Right?
So if this was hue 60, oh, it's, already, it's already pretty close to that, actually. So it needs to be more brighter. Right? Yeah. All right, let's check, let's check it out like this. It's gonna take a second to rebuild, rebuild that sprite sheet. Calibrate monitor, hit key to exit. Back in the day where we had screen savers, and they actually did something important. Yes. Oh, that's better. Yeah, that color is way better. Cool, this character is starting to come together. I like this pant color now, but it needs a little bit of adjustment in the boots there. Yeah, Quake, Age of Empire, nice. Here's a Might Magic, Diablo. Yeah, right on. Those are your classics, all right. Those are classics. Your classics. Dude, Quake is a great classic, right? All these are great classics. Diablo, I played so much Diablo. And Diablo 2. Ooh, wait, wait, before I do this, I want to do one more frame and make him do the funny peck thing. Let's not talk about time and Diablo. <laughs> uh, good, good. Yeah, let's not. Because I don't even want to start to admit. So I'm doing a funny thing where he flexes one peck at a time. <laughs> Hopefully it's funny.
<laughs> He's gonna crush a beer can. <laughs> oh, why did it stop? Don't stop. Don't ever stop that. Loop that forever. <laughs> Awesome. Render that. See how that how that goes in the game, huh? Oh, totally. This is so I don't have to do anything else for Jib's dance party. <laughs> Done. This is like two projects in one. Wait, who's Terry Crew? Sorry, I'm a horrible at pop, pop culture. <laughs> okay, he needs his his face needs to do something else while he's doing this. Just something very slight. Like, as he flexes, one is left, his face turns slightly to the right. Nah, it didn't work. Oh, the Old Spice commercials. Oh. oh. Okay. Oh. Oh, really? Okay, so he's looking slightly to the right. Let's see if we can get him to look like this. Okay, actually, he would need to do that, maybe. Oh, he's ex NFL too. Okay. Hmm. This is one of those ones you gotta see. You just gotta see. Oh, what the heck did I do? Okay.
Okay, no, no, no. Gotta go backwards in time to where. It was the way it was. What's going on? Okay, I just want to layer via cut. Layer via cut. Why can't I layer via cut? Jeez. Ah, there it is. New layer via cut. Whew. That was crazy. Nice, I like it. I like the way it looks now. This is cool, it's good enough. Okay, so I can check that in and then start working on the other animations. All right, Diamond Killer, see you, man.
Asta pasta. So the next animations I'll need are the running ones. This will really help. Actually, south is probably the first one I should render. Okay, all these, we don't need these color fills anymore.
All right, there's one frame. Dang, I just realized how much work this is going to be to do. Gosh, this is 17 files. All oh, these are like several frames, six frames each. This is going to take all the rest of the day. But it'll be worth it. It'll be look it'll look super cool.
All right, one animation done. Well, two animations done. Cool. Well, let's see how this looks in the game. That's a weird standoff. <laughs> oh man, I think his skin might need to be a little darker actually. So I'm probably gonna do these running animations first. and then maybe do another pass. I'm gonna take a break though. <sighs> so yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out. It's just, there's, I always have these doubts when I first draw something because I haven't had the time to relax and think about it for a minute and I don't know, see it a few times, see it from a few different angles, see it at a few different times of the day, you know, and just get different, different sort of, a different look on it, a different take on it. So I need to do that before I go and finish all 17 of these files or whatever, because otherwise I just go down the rabbit hole and, you know, I'd have to redo all 17 of these files. If I, if I want to change one little thing, like, oh, I want his skin to be a little bit darker. So, it's kind of hard to tell with all of his frames all weird. I guess maybe I could take all these files. And then just make him sort of blue somehow. So this is hue, 194, saturation, 
So I'm just trying to tint him blue in a couple of these keyframes just to see if this is the right color overall. So I might do that. I might go through and just make all of them blue for now. It's so funny when they get in that little standoff. Alright, well that's it for today's stream. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate you, appreciate you watching. And um, we'll see y'all next time. Have a good one.